Now, Positively Ernie with Ernie Anastas, a New York TV legend and radio host with great positive stories and interviews. Thanks, Ernie. You're the best. And now, here's Ernie. Hi, everybody, and welcome back to the show. Nice to have you here. I really enjoy this program a lot. You know, this is where I, I look at things that are happening in the news and what people are talking about, but I have a positive viewpoint on what's going on. And today I have a special guest, someone who I think you're really going to enjoy. Uh, this is an interesting guy that I've known for a long time, and he's got a terrific reputation. His name is Mike Lyons, and I want you to say hi to him right now. Hi, Mike. Hey, Ernie. Great to be with you. Thanks Good so much for having me. Good to have you here, Mike. You know, people should know a little bit about you. Mike um, is an interesting guy. Uh, he is a retired Army major and a West Point graduate. Uh, he has had uh, combat experience and a lot of other assignments in the military. But Mike is also a very interesting guy. You probably have seen or heard him on several of the networks around the country and around the world, in fact. Um, he does a lot of analysis, uh, military and leadership consulting. And uh, he does a lot of other things that we're going to talk about right now. And, and Mike, uh, you've got a great career. And uh, as long as I've known you, you've always been what I really appreciate, enthusiastic about what you do and what what has created that i think it's from early on in life isn't it no it is i've tried to always have a positive attitude i think you know you can't accomplish anything without a positive attitude i've, I've had i was blessed with great coaches when i was a kid and mm. my high school football coach is one of the most significant you know people in my life and he, he you know without a positive attitude you can't get anything accomplished i you know it's it's a fundamental tenement of leadership um, yes. if the leader is not positive about something nothing is going to happen right exactly so in that regard so no i i have always uh, in, 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 been enthusiastic it's the only way to go you can you can look at the glass uh, half empty at times but um but you've got to move forward and, and half full is the way to go you do and 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 you really are always moving forward now you know you mentioned the word leadership and i know we want to talk about that today because that's a very important area and and you're a proponent of leadership um, in the military of course but also as you see it in, in the civilian world and uh, and and I've also had a great interest in leadership I think it makes a huge difference in in terms of where an organization where a company uh, where a family where everything goes if you have some sense of direction so when you talk about leadership and and I know you do a lot of different speeches mm -hmm. and seminars and so forth what what is the headline? What what do you like to talk about when you're kind of describing what a good leader is? Well, already so many different things I can think of. Um, I, I think first and foremost, to be a leader in today's world, to be successful, you have to be a servant leader, and you have to recognize that your subordinates and people around you are more important. They're they're the ones that are going to get things done that you want to get done. You know, I've personally been a lifelong learner of leadership. I, I, I went to the Military Academy West Point, which is the leadership laboratory. Uh, mm. Cadets get up every day and learn different lessons about leadership. And I'll tell you, there's good and bad leaders. We've learned sometimes from bad leaders, and we see how not to respond. Mm -hmm. But I think first and foremost is that servant leader and that person that puts others first uh, and recognizes that, um, that that is the way to, to move things forward. Mm -hmm. Now, let's pivot that a little bit because you also have to be a situational leader. There's times when you have to apply different leadership styles. You know, I Not think the doubt. military gets a little bit of a bad rap mm -hmm. in that um, people think that in the military as an, as an officer or a non-commissioned officer, you order people around. You're, I'm the leader because of what I rank and my mm -hmm. position power. Yeah, a lot of people have that idea, yes. Yeah, and, and I would say that that, just, that, that that doesn't work in the civilian world. It really doesn't work in the military. I mean, you can't get people to do things they don't, they don't really don't want to do. So right. you have to motivate them, Motivation. inspire them. Yep. Uh, be positive to your point uh, about it. So, so to me, uh, that servant leader is most important, but then that situational leader applying the right style. You know, um, when you talk about leadership, I'm right with you, and I understand it. Uh, as I told you, I, I took some courses at Harvard Business School, yeah. which I really enjoyed all about leadership. And, and fundamentally, that's exactly what we're talking about. You have to be able to listen. Yeah. You have to be able to listen to what's going on, to be able to communicate ideas and to motivate and inspire people. You know that line, you know, if your door is, is closed, you have problems. If your door is open, you have solutions. Yep. And that's what you have to do. Now, when you talk about leaders um, in the military, let's just talk yeah. about that. Who are the top three or four military leaders that you'd say these people were like exceptional? 
Oh, boy, for my time studying yeah. history, so many to p pick from. I I'd start first with U.S. Grant, Ulysses S. Grant, Grant as, a, sure. as a leader, uh, leading the, the, the Union Army to, to succeed in, in this, on our Civil War. I don't think he gets the credit. I think he's had a renaissance now mm. uh, with what's been happening. I think people are recognizing how you important he was. You never recognized during your time. That's anyway. right. And uh, he was a president, West Point graduate as well. So yeah. I, I think U.S. Grant, if you go back and study what he did, sure. and then you look at General Eisenhower, mm -hmm. who, who wins the Second World War and saves saves the world from, from Nazism and fascism. And what a figure he was. Exactly. And, yeah. and again, a tremendous situational leader, a, a collaborative leader, brought the right people together. Didn't always uh, put American interests first, where we thought that, that he could have because other countries had things vested in what they were doing. Mm -hmm. um, and he, he, he was the, the perfect you know, kind of person for that job. And then I think that last leader, if I give you three examples, sure. it, the, the, the general officer that ran Desert Storm, the battle I was in, General Norman Schwarzkopf, Schwarzkopf was so yeah. inspirational, and right, and and um, just just someone that um, you always knew his intent. I think that's so important from a leader's perspective is to know the intent. What what intent means? Absence, you know, guidance when, when I'm not there. If, there, if, there, if there's if there's mm -hmm. nothing going on, yeah. how are you going to act? And with General Schwarzkopf, we all knew what we were going to do. We were going to attack and we were going to move forward. He set the tone. Hey, absolutely. Exactly. And yeah. so that to me, from, from a military perspective, those were three, uh, that two of them go on to become presidents. Uh, mm -hmm. They kind of cross over. Yeah. Uh, Norman Schwarzkopf, though, um, from from my as a leader, I was grateful that he mm -hmm. was the commanding general when I was in combat because mm -hmm. I always knew he had our interests at heart. Yeah. I mean, yeah, I remember covering the parade here uh, yes. in New York City uh, with Schwarzkopf. And, and I also remember, you know, Colin Powell as well. Yep. Uh, you know, a lot of good names. So in, in the military, you know, you have some of these real strong figures. And there are so many others. Sure. And, and you could go on and on. Uh, take it into the civilian world. Yeah. Okay. Leaders of today. If, if I were to ask you, whatever, three of the top leaders that you see in today's world. Yeah. In terms of the direction, the guidance. And to me, a leader is someone who has the vision. Yeah. That's the difference. Yeah. If you have the vision of where you want to go, where you want to take whatever it is, yeah. that makes a great leader. Who are they? I, you know, it's funny. So much noise, I think, goes around the civilian leaders of the world right now. And you've got to start with Elon Musk, number one, obviously, mm -hmm. because of the businesses he runs, the visions he's had, the impact he's had on social media, taking over Twitter, converting it to X, sure. and what he's done with electronic vehicles, um, and leaders in pharmaceuticals. So it, it's it's much more niche based in, in the in these other in these other civilian societies mm -hmm. and uh, civilian countries companies. I th I think that um, what a leader would bring from a civilian perspective is a broad base of experience. Yeah. And that's why, again, when Elon Musk runs a social media company and then can run an engineering company, he's deep down as an engineer, mm -hmm. that's tr that shows tremendous uh, mm -hmm. leadership. Um, and you look at look at even Jamie Dimon, you look at people here on Wall Street, yeah. you know, yeah, that, 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 that w Morgan with Chase. all of the all of the forces that are acting on our country, um, keeping a steady hand on the financial backbone. What makes mm -hmm. America great is yeah. is the financial acumen that we have here in this country. Well, and I think, I, think, I think leaders like that are, are important to that. But you know what, uh, and I know, Mike, you, you'll, you'll agree with me, that uh, when you listen to people mm -hmm. uh, in general, they will talk about a lack of leadership today. Yeah. That, you know, there may be a handful of people that you can point out, uh, but then again, people are saying, we don't have people who really are committed. Yeah. Um, it, it seems to be a lot of self-serving, but yeah. that's been a problem for years. But perhaps now more than ever with, um, with the internet, yeah. social media, um, th there's a lot of self-promotion. Sure. And, and people see that, and they look for those who have a genuine yeah. desire sure. to do good. Yeah. Um, how do you answer people who say, you know, uh, we don't really have that leadership. Uh, what, what's wrong? What's missing? And how can we get it back? Well, if you get to a place where you get a leader and they exhibit those qualities, get, get out of there. It's not a good environment for you to be mm -hmm. in. And those, those toxic environments are not, are not something that are going to be positive for you to be. Right. I, I, just lo I always look at people's competence and commitment to what, you know, kind of what they're doing. And, and as a leader, recognize every subordinate is asking, you know, a couple of questions. Is, is this person committed to excellence? Leaders are committed to excellence. Is this person going to look out for me and is going to make sure that I'm going to move along and are we going to all move along together? Mm. Um, I, I, I think that um, the, the best leaders that I've seen, you know, kind of know what they know, know what they don't know, yeah. right? They, yeah. they, they are adept at 
emotional intelligence. They mm-hmm. read the room. They can they recognize when to say something, when to not say something. Your point about sure. communication. Um, but my recommendation is, if you're in an environment where that the leader is 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 toxic or in a, in a situation where they're not looking out for the the welfare of everybody, yes, time to find another place. You know, it's interesting because I was going to bring this up. I, I think what goes hand in hand with leadership is a word called loyalty. Yeah. And I think when you talk to a lot of people, they'll say, you know what? If I feel that the boss right. is loyal to me, because yep. I'm being loyal to them, because it's a two-way street. Yeah. And a lot of people today feel that, you know, that loyalty isn't there. Sure. That you can be replaced. Yeah. Whether it's by another individual or AI or whatever it happens to be. Right. And so, and I want you to talk about that. That loyalty issue is very important to feel that you belong and someone truly cares about you. Yeah. And you're not just a number. Yeah. I think to project loyalty as a leader by showing people around you that you're going to endure the hardship. Mm. You know, I used to work at a place where I had uh, people installing equipment late at night and I had to show up at late at night to show them I wasn't good at installing the equipment, but they worked for me and I, and it was, they were part of our big organization. Yeah. And I wanted them to know that I was willing to endure the hardship with them because mm. they were away from their families and the like. Uh, but loyalty is important and yeah. it's something that's demonstrated. It's not, you can't talk about it. You can talk right. about all you want. Yeah. Um, and, it, and, o- and oftentimes it's, it's, it has to be tied to what's the overall objective. What are we trying to do mm-hmm. here? Mm-hmm. And then a good leader recognizes that, you know, Colin Powell has a tremendous, uh, uh, list of, of things uh, that regard to his, his laws of leadership, so to speak. You know, sure. a couple of them in particular, for example, for those out there that are struggling with their position, uh, you know, don't put your position so close to your ego. When the position falls, your ego falls with it. You've got to remain confident mm-hmm. there. Mm-hmm. Um, but but in every case, a leader should be always trying to push the subordinates to yeah. d- do better and, and almost work out of that job because we're mm-hmm. going to find something else for you to sure. do sure. that you're going to move forward with. You know, um, we both have an interest in young people. Sure. Uh, we're, we're family men, and um, and I know you do a lot of work. I mean, you're, yep. you're even doing things with the NHL. Yep, I coach. Uh, yeah. You know, and, and you're around that kind of an environment. To me, I think it's very important to be able to instill uh, the right feelings about leadership and loyalty and all the things we talked about at a very early age. I think everything at an early age is important. Yeah, yeah. But I want to talk about that for a minute. Like, how do we help our young people? Yeah. Whether it's at home. Sure. Which is the center. Yeah. Uh, in our schools, in our community, in our neighborhood. How do we help our young people to understand the, the really fundamental basic values of good leadership and, and being a good, a good friend and being a good supporter uh, to, uh, to be able to, to see, you know, our society build and grow and develop into yeah. something that we're all proud of? Yeah, great question, Ernie. I, I think that, um, first of all, to be a good leader, to be a dynamic leader, you have to be a dynamic subordinate. And I think um, that I would advise youth of today to listen to your coaches, listen to your teachers, um, become self-disciplined, right? If, mm-hmm. if you, you can't expect to project other values on other things if you're not showing them. Leadership is all about leading by example in some mm-hmm. ways and doing those kinds of things. Yeah. So study hard in school, get those good grades, f- f- seek out mentors, look for people that are taking an interest in you right. that, uh, in a way that you know that are going to be positive, that have been successful. Um, recognize you're going to have bad days. I think, sure. I think in some ways we've, we've put um, so much pressure on our kids today, uh, kids I coach, for example, about to be perfect uh, on certain things. And they're gonna have, you're going to have bad days, and you've got to recover from How them. How you handle things. it. Exactly. You're sure. going to fail a test. You're going to do things. It, you know, prepare for all those things. So, so it's all about, I think, being a dynamic subordinate. And, mm. and from that case, is you, you have that responsibility to be a good student, yeah. to be a good athlete, and then you and then, you know, go from there. You know, you, you touched on, on athletics, uh, mm-hmm. which is a, a, a big area, a big field, especially for, for young people. And uh, I, I really uh, admire when I'm watching, particularly tennis matches. Sure. And, and I end up seeing, uh, you know, the, the, the players congratulating each other at the end of a match. Now, as people will say whether it's sincere or not, it doesn't matter. Yeah. The point is that they're demonstrating sure. that which is a fine example. But to me, when, when I hear, um, uh, as I mentioned, you know, whatever it happens to be at a, a major tennis match, when I hear the, the, the loser, if you will, talk about and congratulate the winner yeah. and talk about their qualities, uh, I admire that so much. And I, I say, what a great example of how to, and, and that particular person who's saying that right. is elevated. Sure. 
everybody talks about that person and say, wow, this, this guy is right. great. This woman is terrific. Yeah. Um, I think that's a very important fact that when you, when you have an opportunity right. to be a, a good sport, sure. you have to demonstrate that. Yeah. And, and I think that can make a huge difference, especially with the little ones. Yeah, as, as a coach, I always import that uh, onto the, 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 the players I've always had about being a good sport, about if we're going to play hard, we're going to leave everything on the ice when we're out there. But when it's over, if we've lost, uh, we learn. We don't necessarily just lose. We don't mm. you know, step, take a step mm -hmm. back. And, and in, some, in some ways, when you do have those losses, they, they end up yeah. – making other successes all the way down the line. So, so that's, that's the responsibility of a coach to teach that, those kinds of manners. And then as they mature, as, as a, yeah. the athlete matures, mm -hmm. they recognize the importance of that sportsmanship. Uh, Mike, a, a, as a military guy, okay, West Point, uh, retired major, combat experience and all of that and so forth. And you, you do a lot with, with the academy right now. Yeah. Um, I, I wanted to uh, ask you about something that I, I did a story about it not too long ago that uh, military recruitment enrollment is down. Yeah. Uh, seriously down. It is. Yeah. I, I think, and I may be mistaken here, but the, the only one, uh, the only uh, uh, armed force that, that seemed to be doing well were the Marines. Mm -hmm. And they basically said because they have a good campaign. Yeah. Um, and I want to ask you about that. Are we having a serious problem right now with, with our military in, in terms of recruiting more people and, and building up our force? There's a challenge going on yeah. in the military right now for that. Some of it has to do with just being uh, qualified. The bar is high to get into the military. The, mm -hmm. You know, I, I came from the earlier generation, you know, go back to the 60s and 70s where the military was, uh, uh, they still had the draft and it was the volunteer army. And, uh, you know, judges gave people the choice of going to jail or going to the military. Like those days are long over. Mm. And we've had a superb military for the past 30, 40 years, since, since the ashes of Vietnam. And, and mm -hmm. I think, and I, and I thank God, and I thank a Vietnam veteran anytime I see them, because on their backs is because we have the military we have today. They were scorned when they came home. They did not receive the, the rightful uh, congratulations, and they did not receive the thanks that they should have from this country. That's another separate issue. Yeah. But the point is, uh, the forces that are acting on youth today of being out of shape and sitting on their couch and playing video games and all those kinds of things are impacting that qualified pool. So that's, that's part of it. It is a mm -hmm. campaign. There's no mm -hmm. question. It's a message of what you contribute, but to think about, um, we're still having, we still have tremendous candidates that, that come into our military okay. every day that serve yeah. their country, that are patriotic, that mm -hmm. recognize it's still a great place to start. You know, people always worry about war. Sure. Uh, I mean, it's the ugliest thing you could ever imagine. Uh, it's so inhumane. Uh, it, it just, right. it just, it, disturbing is, is not the word. I mean, it's just right. beyond that. And people are concerned about it. And and looking towards the future, yeah, with technology, right, and the way things are, maybe we'll bring in communications too. I'm not really sure. Right. What do you see looking into the future in terms of where we're going? Are we going into? Huh, I would hope a better place. Yeah. Or are we going into something that's going to be? unheard of right now you know i went to war as a young man and i always vowed going forward i would do everything i could to educate people uh, on the the horrors of war about yeah. uh, it's uh, the unnecessary aspect of it but here we sit uh, in, a, in a world with you know conflict in sure. europe and conflict in Absolutely. gaza and in israel and yep. and i just always hoped the united states so when i went to war i was grateful because protection of our force was a priority as i looked at our great equipment and i knew that we were sa we felt safe we felt invincible and it's, sure. it's kind of crazy to say that but then you look at what's going on in russia where you see the russian uh, country the country puts its soldiers in these death traps and these tanks that blow up and they they just don't have no they, they just don't care about their lives uh, as horrific. for go, as for going to war, though, mm -hmm. it's deterrence. It's the United States. We should make it so bloody, absolute, impossible for a, a country to think that if they attack us or do mm -hmm. something to us, that oh. they will survive anything about, about it. Yeah. So deterrence to me is the key. It, right now, I'm very concerned about the Pacific, whether or not we have enough deterrence to keep China uh, in, in its kind of box, so to mm -hmm. speak, as they mm -hmm. are trying to project power. We have a pan NATO situation going on there. Uh, as we with great allies, Australia, Japan, South Korea, uh, the Philippines. But um, and my son's in the Navy now, so yeah. I'm very I'm concerned oh, about our wow. U.S. Navy. Yeah. Our Navy needs to project power. Our Air Force needs to project power, and then our Army and Marine Corps need to be ready to go when the time mm -hmm. comes. 
you know, uh, there are probably people, you know, listening and watching uh, to what I'm going to say, and they'll say that that's, you're being a little unrealistic here, Ernie. But you know, I, I do hear the conversations, and and I I have these these persuasions as well, that in a time when communications has never been better, right? I mean, what we have available at our hands, sure, is incredible. Yeah, to be able to talk, communicate right. all over the world. Yeah, why? can't that force be used in a positive way right. to be able to have world leaders sit and say, wait a minute, let's unite Yeah. Uh, in a broad sense. Sure. Let's unite in, in, a, in a common cause of, of saving humanity. Yeah. I mean, we're all in this. Everybody's in it. And no one's coming out alive right. one way or another. Right. So why can't we stop and say, if that's the, the truth, if that's what it is, why can't our world leaders find a way to say, look, we, we have our interests. Yeah. Okay? That's not going to change. Right. But let's have a common interest to say, let's respect one another. Let's understand yeah. one another. Let's find a way to avoid the war. Yeah. Let's find a way to, 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 to live in a better world. Mm -hmm. Again, people might say, you're being unrealistic. Yeah. <laughs> but I'd like to see that someday, which would be nice. Yeah. I, I still <laughs> believe in peace through superior deterrence and equipment in that regard because when you look at the conduct of some of the world leaders they just they're untrustable it goes you back to leadership it does, doesn't right it goes back to that well, you and, and i were talking about exactly um when I, there's always i i look at linchpins i look at things that make differences in 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 the like and um so far we haven't seen that happen in in ukraine and russia for example what i mean by a linchpin is like what will for, force one side to now really change their behavior yeah. haven't really seen it haven't seen it in israel as well there's not any kind of change there. For us, it's our technology, it's our GPS, it's our communication systems. You know, when I was in Desert Storm, I didn't get a chance to call home for two months. Now soldiers mm -hmm. can be deployed to the far ends of oh, the yeah. earth and pick up a phone and call Absolutely. anybody anytime. Yeah. So, so your different. point about communications and mm -hmm. things that we have here yeah. in our country are just tremendous, yeah. you know, difference makers. And yeah. and you've got to find, again, the linchpins. And, but we deal with people in the world that want us to do us harm unfortunately oh no unfortunately um i, I love this discussion I, I i always ask my guests uh, kind of a, one of my closing questions if you could offer a newborn baby a piece of advice from your experience in life uh what you've what you've done what you know mm -hmm. what you f feel what kind of little nugget would you pass along to a newborn baby to say you know what i want you to tuck this away yeah. And someday I hope that this will be helpful in your life. What would that be, Mike? Well, I hope it's not transactional. I hope it's not a one thing about, you know, buying Microsoft stock in the <laughs> yeah, next 10 not. years or something. <laughs> I would just say um, f blaze a path that you feel is right mm. and, and know and, 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 and hope that you're surrounded by support systems. I mean, good parents and good family and a good school district. And not everybody has this. Uh, and seek out, seek out ways to to um, to, to make yourself better all the time. Yeah. I, I and I would say to a newborn, I'd say just like you said you did, Ernie. Like you're spend a lifetime continuously learning. Yeah, you know, no matter whether you're in when you start school, when you get out of school, when you start yeah. your job, and your later careers, keep growing, keep growing, and Absolutely. and you're going to keep moving forward. And if you're you're, you're this. Your body is this vehicle to get mm. you through this thing called life, right? Yeah. And if you get to that spot where it's almost over and it's all nicked up and it's all scarred uh -huh. up, and all, then you know what? You, you probably did a, a lot of good yeah. stuff. You had a lot of impact. It's a very so good piece of trust, advice. Trust your instinct. You, trust your, and you know what? Uh, in, in closing, I, I love quotations, and one that I use often, and, and it's to your point, uh, when you talk about you know, going for it. Uh, don't go where the path may lead. Right. Go where there's no path yeah. and leave a trail. Right. Perfect. Create something different. Blaze it. Absolutely. Yeah, blaze it. Mike Lyons, terrific guest. Congratulations. If people want to get in touch with you, uh, any activities that, that they want to contact you on, I mean, you're, you're available yeah. to do so many different things. How do they reach you? Uh, MAJ, M -A -J, Mike Lyons, I'm on X, I'm on Twitter there. I'm also on Facebook uh, under the Military Minute. You can find me there. I'm also I'm on LinkedIn and places like that. Always want yeah. to talk about leadership, talk about good things, how positive our, our military in particular, and, uh, and keeping our country strong. Fantastic. Mike Lyons, great guest. Take care of your family. Stay well and happy. Come back and see us again sometime, okay? Absolutely. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Mike. Thanks, everybody, for watching, and we'll catch you next time here on Positively Early. Bye.